David Ochoa. This took uh, MLS Twitter by storm on Saturday night. I mean, this is it. I don't know what the right uh, adjective to describe this is. I mean, I was going to say fun, uh, potentially frustrating, depending on your point of view. Certainly dramatic. Certainly petty. Uh, let's just, I'll walk you through the whole situation if you missed it. Just, just real quick, bear with me, Doyle, then I'll let you have, uh, have your say here. RSL then play week one. RSL go to Minnesota. Minnesota lost four, nothing to Seattle in week one. So Minnesota has their home opener against the team that we all basically said, you know, and take, take analysis in MLS and preseason with a grain of salt that we said was going to be at the bottom of the West and probably at the bottom of the standings overall two goals. For RSL, a comeback goal for Minnesota. RSL win. David Ochoa, who took some shtick from fans per all reports throughout the game. Remember, there are not full capacity in stadiums. So David Ochoa is not dealing with a lot of like white noise here. He can hear what's being said behind him. In the past, if you know Minnesota United fans or Minnesota Thunder fans or whatever it might have been in a past iteration of the NSL, they were known for doing opposition research on their goalkeepers, opposing goalkeepers, and heckling extremely effectively said goalkeepers. My expectation is they heck, they probably were heckling David Ochoa throughout this match, and David Ochoa gave it back. You know the Chase My understanding Gasper incident? was it was you're the other Ochoa, and you're not as good as the other ah. Ochoa in goal and stuff like that. Yeah. Dude, this is like when I played against New England, they would generally not have – the hugest crowd and you could, but you could hear specific things from fans on the sideline. And whereas like Seattle, you can't hear, you just hear, you can't even hear the person next to you. Um, but it was worse. It was worse when you can hear specific <laughs> comments from supporters. Do you, do like, you remember any in particular that just I mean, really was, hit you in the core? Uh, I think it was mostly just cheap helmet jokes, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, when you hear it personally, you're like, oh man, that's, that's tough to swallow. So anyway, David Cho has been known in USL and at other levels, uh, to be a bit of a, you were talking about the, you know, the dark arts there, Dave, he has a little bit of that in him. He's, he's willing to mix it up a little bit to there's a lot of that in him he has yes. a lot of that he, in him. to waste a little time you saw it with the chase gasper incident at the end where he goes down he's holding his ribs chase gasper barely touched him and at the end of this game when rsl won david ochoa turned around and booted the ball into the wonder wall and minnesota united were not happy about it including ochoa's u23 teammate uh dotson came over and was pushing him the whole team was there adrian heath came steaming out of the the, the box and after the game Adrian Heath had this to say. Anders, cue it up. No, the, the, the goalkeeper just turned around and booted the ball in our fans and towards our supporters, which is, is a no-no. We all know that. Um, he's got some edge on him for a kid who's not that good. So, the, Whoa. Yeah, he just, I mean, he, he quick-dropped that one on David Ochoa. A lot of emotions running high here. Freddie Juarez was asked about that comment in his post-game press conference. He was kind of like, hey, we support David. We know he has growth uh, with him, but we think he's a really great player. We stand behind him. I'm not going to comment on what other people say. It's the heat of the moment, uh, post-game, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, that's the long and the short of it. Doyle, I didn't experience this one live. I had the joy of going back and uh, and, and combing through all the, the Twitter conversation and the plays. Give me your take on everything that happened here. Who were the villains? What roles did people play? Who was in the right? Who was in the wrong? Was anybody in any of those places, or was this just pure, petty, dramatic fun? Pure, petty, dramatic fun. Nobody was in the wrong. Almost everybody was in the right. Achoa, on top of likely being heckled for the entire game, this was his first ever win as an MLS goalkeeper. He's only played one other game before, the last game of last season. They lost that one. This is his first game since that colossal error in CONCACAF Olympic qualifying. Uh, getting the win in this one was, I'm sure, a just massive relief. He might have punted the ball into the stands anyway. It, like, it, like, there didn't have to be any heckling. Like, you, you're going to celebrate something like that. And I loved to see his emotion in celebrating it. And then the afters were hilarious. And Adrian Heath is completely within his rights to burn the kid post game. Because right now, David Ochoa is not that good. He, like, we saw the error against Honduras in, in Olympic qualifying, and we saw throughout Olympic qualifying, while well, he's a very good shot stopper, he's questionable with his feet, and he's prone to bobbling a catch. Like, he, he bobbles the ball a lot. Happened twice in this game. Minnesota were not on their toes 
and they did not burn him. Or they did not punish him for either of those drops. So he has to he has to get better. But he's a talented twenty year old goalkeeper getting his first win. So it was awesome. Minnesota United fans in my Twitter mentioned specifically complaining about Achoa punting the ball into the stands, saying somebody could have gotten hurt. That team took twenty three shots. Two were on goal. If you think <laughs> punting the ball into the stands is going to hurt somebody, have a chat with your forwards because that, like, through two games, that is the story for Minnesota United. And we should be talking about that and not this post game BS because of all the teams that we thought were pretty, pretty good to start this year, it's Minnesota United who've had the worst start. And that's been overshadowed. I mean, look, they, they did come out, the players did, came out and really defended their fans. It's a shame they didn't defend you know, much of anything, especially on the break in this game. They gave two goals to RSL. Mm-hmm. Like uh, To me, this was like a Mourinho moment for Adrian Heath. It was a deflect moment. So instead of all of us talking about, as you said, how Minnesota United was this much fancied team who have spent big on Reynoso and who went out and got Juan Chope and then went out and got another big forward from Lagoon, before this game, we're talking about David Ochoa kicking a ball high up into the stands instead of two losses in two games and there being real uncertainty about what Minnesota United are doing and whether it's going to be effective. Like In some ways, it's brilliant. The good news for Ochoa is I think their next three matches are at home. So he's (laughs) he's going to have... I I don't think he's done himself any favors because if, if you're an opposing supporters group and you're coming to the next match... You basically, he basically yeah, told on himself that him. you're going to get like, you can get in my head. Like, and I'm, I'm going to be playing. I'm not only playing against the 11 men on the pitch, I'm playing against y'all behind me too. And that's what supporters thrive on. They want to get a piece of that. That's from what they're behind the goal for. From everything I've heard about Achoa, that's what he wants. <laughs> like, this is it. Like, he has potential <laughs> to be the biggest villain in this league since Steven Lennart. Wow. Like, like, just like, beloved in his by his home fans and just loathed everywhere well, else in the league. His reaction to the Minnesota goal was like, try and get the ball so they don't chase it out. Then it gets knocked out of his hand, just goes down, grabs a body part, covers yeah. his face. The whole thing's going on, and he was kind of doing it throughout. Although, I still don't see as much malice as everyone's trying to give. Like, it's the end of a game he already had in his hands. No. The ref blows the whistle. He's going to punt it. You're just signing the ball and loft no. into the crowd like Roger Federer. No. It's just you're no. trying to keep everyone engaged. No, no. <laughs> this is no. entertainment. I can't Alien back. I cannot. Of it. I can't back this. I, I, I feel like. lofted clip to the top of the wonder wall. I'm trying to think of like for else Lake players in the past, like Becker, man, they're, they're, they've got some epic trash talkers in, <laughs> in their club's history. Players that will get in your face, get in your ear, whatever it is throughout the whole match. And I, I think that his reaction after the match was was deserved, right? He, you see him pumping his fist. He's jacked up. If you want to go even, you know, I know goalkeepers, I've, as a game ended, walk right by me and make sure that you hear them celebrate or you can see it. And I, I think that's all fair game. Once you start kicking the ball in the crowd, you start doing things like that, now suddenly the conversations around – you, as opposed to your, you know, the team's win. I, I can't really. I don't think it's a good sign. Uh, I think it's a young, it's a young goalkeeper. Obviously, goalkeepers are wired different. We all know that. But I just, I, I can't say that it's. Uh, uh, I, if he has ambitions of being, you know, a big time goalkeeper in this league, as well as he's already representing that. <laughs> <laughs> I want yeah, him to that's do why I'm it here. after the next road game. I would yeah. love to see him do it after the Damn next it, road game. Well. This is like he, this is like a WWE character now. <laughs> Just like Kalen's about Kalen's about to write wh- about why he he doesn't want to go to Disney World anymore. So I mean, somebody, that's the same energy you're bringing. Here. I didn't realize that John Terry was on extra time now, <laughs> and the way the game should be played. Yeah. God, and we'll say this for Minnesota: it's been bad the first two games. A lot of the things you mentioned haven't been there. Ramon, Ramon Abula doesn't dress for this game. Uh, Adrian Hunu, who's a, in his prime DP striker from Ligue 1, isn't even here yet. Uh, and Debassi hasn't been available for them as their starting center back. That's not even talking about Ike because we're not really going to talk about him for a while now. So this is a group that it's been really bad uh, in these first two games. But a lot of the pieces that you talked about and a lot of the hype 
hasn't been around. So the question I think now is, can they keep themselves from sinking into something before they're all available? Because if they're negative 15 goal differential, everyone's losing their minds uh, and they have no support and there's no culture around the team. By the time these guys get in, that's the real fear for them. But otherwise, I still think you look at this game. Yeah, if they had a true center forward that they spent a lot of money on, they'd be creating more chances and yeah. they'd have more opportunities. I think I think Minnesota is going to be fine, to be honest with you. I think, though, through two games, the, the my biggest takeaway with them is just the lack of on-the-ball dynamism from their wingers. And if you go back and you look at that stretch run and then into the playoffs, Babello was the best player, the key to it. But, like, Kevin Molino was amazing. He was amazing. And, like, Ethan Finley's a really good winger. Robin Lud, I think, is a very good winger. Different types of guys. Like, Finley just wants to run in behind, take one or two touches. He's not going to beat anybody off the dribble. Uh, Lud doesn't have that type of pace. They miss the ability to just eliminate defenders on the ball that Kevin Molino had. Um, and they're going to, if they're going to make the type of run this year that they made last year, I think that is going to be the biggest thing that they have to figure out. But overall, Minnesota's fine. I, they're still a, a, going to be a solid playoff team this year, unless there are injuries or something goes spectacularly wrong. Franco Fragapane continues to be a name linked with them. Cincinnati got jumped into that, but now that seems more like probably an agent play in some way than anything else to try to drive it up as he was scoring goals in Argentina. Of course, they went and got uh, Honel. What? How do you fit all these players on the field? Like you Maybe got two Avila. forwards. So it, it's two forwards, and then what? I, I, maybe it might be two forwards and Babello in like a four three one two. You know, because you you could play like the four three one two. You put, you know, Will Trap in the middle, and then Gregus and Dotson on either side of him, or Ozzy in the middle and Gregus and, and Dotson on the other side. Like you have those types of guys, and then does it relegate the likes of of Lud and Finley? Uh, and Justin McMaster, who I think has been pretty good through two games, does it relegate them to like bench rolls or second half change the formation type of thing? Yeah, but like that's the way it is now in MLS. Good teams have depth. Good teams have flexibility and the the ability to change shape. But I, I, I'm not like I'm not betting that they're going to change away from the four two three one because we saw how effective that was for them last year. But it does seem like they are edging towards having real flexibility and personnel formation and even tactical approach. But besides depth, one of the things that's changed is like, one, I don't know that they were sure they were going to get Hunu done. And so you have a chance to bring Ramon Abula in, but it's on loan. So that's not your guy. That's not the guy you have to ride by. And the other thing is he's 31. He didn't start week one. He's not even available week two. So you don't know how often you're even going to have both of them as an option. Right now they take any of them. Just yeah. to, to put someone in there that's not swag. Shout out to Swags, legend. So uh, I don't know that it has to change because this is one of the things we talk about. How does Kevin Molino fit into Columbus? He's not even available. And now Zardes might be gone for how long for national team and all this stuff. Like these are the things you need to be able to compete in MLS week in and week out. RSL, people didn't believe in him. We were among those people. I mean, in a lot of ways, rightfully so. The club is in a place where there's a lot of uncertainty. Let's just, can we just leave it at it? it was a really good week one. RSL yeah. had a lot of fun. Congrats to being back in the season. They got stuck with a bye uh, week one in MLS. They get a win. They get a big two goals from the guy they brought in on loan, their biggest addition. Awesome start for RSL. Looking forward to seeing it as we roll on. So I will just end it on this. I think there's a little bit of like, Mind Games Masterclass from Adrian Heath and all that post-game stuff to sort of shift the conversation because we're, you guys are right. This is not the complete team. They don't need to be talking about how, how poor it's been so far. If they can kind of kick that can down the road and get players back, they may never need to have that conversation. The flip side is this is perfect for RSL. They didn't even get a week one. They had nothing to talk about because they weren't playing. Now they have headline news. Like, this is the sort of thing. If you're a sports fan in Utah, you see this and you're like, screw those Screw those guys in Minnesota. This is our squad. Davido Cho is our guy. This is our team. We're back, baby. RSL. So, you, yeah, we'll see. Do you feel a rivalry brewing? I don't mm. know, man. Mm. We got a little sporting Kansas City RSL stuff here. I don't know what happened in preseason. Maybe they were kicking each other in preseason if they played. No idea. But this is how uh, some of that little uh, on-field stuff gets started.